I don't do no fancy stuff with music and all of that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't gotten fancy like Miss Bailey West. Yes, but hey, everybody. Let's see, I'll be able to see in a few minutes. So, um, oh, there we go. I got to go to me and then, okay. All right. Hey, y'all. How's everybody doing this afternoon, this evening? It's early evening. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's late, late it's evening. Late evening. Well, late, late evening. evening. Yes. Hey, everybody. Okay, so if y'all see me looking down, y'all already know what, what it is. So we're going to welcome Miss Love Belvin. Ha ha. Y'all didn't think I had that kind of juice, did you? I'm done. I'm so done. <laughs> Yeah, they didn't think I had that kind of juice. I'd be pulling it, baby. I could not. <laughs> I, there's my, um. okay, so there is Miss Riggins Gates. That is my co-teacher. Y'all be nice to Miss Gates. Oh, is that she, the one I saw on IG, Jess? Yes, that is my that is my co-teacher who is hey. stuck on nothing but love, Belvin. She says she's going to jump on Christina, but oh, she no. has read your catalog <laughs> like, I think she's on her second, maybe her third run. I don't know. DCJ? No, you. She's oh, on her, your Oh, her. wow. Nice. What the yeah, God? It's me. <laughs> 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 so, okay. I can't give you too much attention, Gates. I can't give you too much attention. And everybody else to get jealous. So, That's all right, Miss Love. Welcome. Yeah, I, I so see. appreciate you being here. Ms. Robinson. Oh, my God. Let me tell you something I've been saying. Um, and I have to still have to figure out a way. And we'll talk. Thank you so much. We'll talk more about it. I got to stop saying that. We'll talk more about it at another time. But <laughs> I um I realized that I have a new wave of vocal supporters. So, I you know, with with each project, not, they're not even a project, definitely each book, right? Mm-hmm. I notice a new, you know, a, an increase of followers, like, you know, new people that I've not seen. But when I tell you, it's, at least since Sadiq, I have this vocal new class, mm -hmm. new class of vocal supporters. And let me tell you something. It means so much because <laughs> I'm just going to say it. Okay. <laughs> I've just, you know, people can be so fickle. They come in and then, you know, you're, 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 you're everything to them. You're the bomb. You're this, you know, I'm, you're my number one author. I'm your number one fan. And then it's just like, <clears throat> fade to black. So it was wonderful when God, I was just talking to, about talking to this uh, with my trainer uh, Wednesday, God will send you the help you need, or God will send you the support you need when you need it. So I want to say hi, like, you know, Maisha, Miss Robinson, she's been here. Let me see who else. Is that's easy. Ayana. You can't see her, but Ayana, Ayana that says we love you. That's Ayana, Ayana. Miss First mm -hmm. is definitely one. She is hugely vocal. Oh my God. And I can't tell you how much it means to have that support because I mean, you know, I always say I ain't got no self-esteem problems, but when you see people falling off, it's just like, okay, am I doing something wrong? But it's not that. I just, you know, you just have to welcome new people. So I just want to say thank you so much for your support. And I see you, I feel you, and I really appreciate you. Awesome. So I'm going to, I'm not going to jump right into Tori because I know some people have not read, but I got some questions for um, Tori. <laughs> That's okay. Anissia talking about she, <laughs> she made it. <laughs> you saw that? She was looking for us at six o'clock. <laughs> oh, that? Her name is um, Anissia. I think I'm saying it right. Anissia, or it might be Anissia because I, Anissia Miller. Yeah. Miss Marshall, hey sis. Aww. Yeah, and then that's yeah. Terry Lynn James. So anyway, I, I can't keep looking down, y'all. I know, right? So. Same. Like, <laughs> but hey, everybody. <laughs> um, love, so love, just give us a recap. I know some people. So for for your new people, mm -hmm. um, how did your journey to writing begin? Before we jump into, um, muted love and um. All of that good stuff. So, so I think um, it, it began with me telling stories, like inappropriate stories when I was like in, I don't even know if I was in quite middle school yet, but let's call it middle school um, to my friends. And I would just come up with these stories and they would not call me crazy. And we, you know, we had our sleepovers and all this other stuff. 
And then, and then the next time, like another significant event happened was when I was an undergrad and my sweet mate, you know, she gave me, uh, which is very similar to, no, it's not. It's somewhat similar to Tori and I'm lying, Avery and Carmen in uh, Muted Hopelessness. But, you know, we shared an apartment together. And mm -hmm. he was a big leader too. And she put me up on an Eric Jerome Dickey, like friends and lovers. And then I was like, wait, you have more of this? And she said, yeah. And then I was like, hey, you have more. And, she, and then I was like, you have more. So I think by the third time she said, listen, it's lots of good literature out there. You just got to buy some. And that's all I needed to know. So it was at that time I said, I'm going to write a story and it's not going to take me forever to put out a story. I'm just going to write it straight through. And that was a lie. I graduated. <laughs> <laughs> in uh, April of 2000, May of 2002, and I started writing, you know, what we now know as Lip, um, mm -hmm. which is why I probably specifically Love Lost in December. I was working as, I was working in a preschool as a family worker, that was my title, and I had a break, and I said, let me start this book. I had a, I had a computer and everything in my little apartment, <clears throat> and I started writing, and it took almost <laughs> took almost ten years to finish, <laughs> but I had something to prove. Oh, it can get it can be done. It doesn't have to take so long to put out another book. So anyway, that is where it got started. And there's so many things that happened in my life over those ten years. Like I was really um, trying to progress in my traditional career in public health certification. Mm -hmm. By the way, I just got finished taking courses for just minutes before I used the bathroom and then I came down here to talk to you. Like, uh, so, you know, I was just, you know, buying a house and just, you know, going through life. And, um, and then finally, um, I got a team behind me because for years I kept saying, I'm gonna write a book. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna write books and people believe me. Um, and then I got tired of telling people and then finally, you know, I got laid off and then I started taking it seriously and really putting in the work. So. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to jump right in. Um, I would say tell us about Tori, but I kind of know about Tori because you threw me off mm. because at Indie Love 2018, that's when we were in L.A., right? Mm -hmm. I was like, you, you told us about the boxer and um, all of this stuff. Somebody thought it was a race car. Is there, was there, is there a race car story supposed to be coming to? A race season? car? Was that CCJ? Somebody with NASCAR? Somebody, somebody, somebody no. was going to do. I don't know, but I remember you told us all about Tori McNabb, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden, Sadiq. And so I remember well, asking you, you the only like, person to call me out on that. Thanks a lot, Joss. But that was if between you me and you. That wasn't to everybody. You were the legit only person. I was like, "Ooh, that was a smooth transition," except for Joss. Because <laughs> you had randomly one day. I think it was like spring of. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, spring of 18. I feel like, and you were like, love, I know you're doing Love's an Eligible Receiver, but who is next? And I feel like I said it probably on my pre-publication thoughts. And you and you said, Tori's next. And I said, yeah, <laughs> she's next. And then Sadiq and, and, and them started talking so much, and Tori was not talking enough. And Ashton didn't talk at all. At all. Okay. I only knew about Tori's... Um, Tori's uh, history, her, um, her, this is a phrase I'm looking for, her psychology in terms of um, infidelity or being the, you know, oh gosh, I forget the term, but her um, not wanting to be like her mom and, and, and her, her history that, you know, with, with her mother and everything. And mm -hmm. I learned about her wanting a baby while she, you know, th that was just, there was nothing going on in Millville. And mm -hmm. that's what they desire. Like, that's what they wanted. Um, they wanted kids. They didn't want degrees. They didn't want businesses. They wanted kids. So I would, I heard these things from her and I would make myself voice notes and everything like that. But I remember saying to CCJ as I was closing up Love's Ineligible Receiver, I'm like, dog. If these if, if these Sadiq characters keep talking, I'm gonna have to put Tori to the side because, you know, I, I don't have enough and I, I don't I don't have time. And that's what happened. Like within a matter of weeks, mm -hmm. Sadiq and them talk louder, and uh, and and that's that's who we went with. Okay, yeah, because I was like, okay, you keep talking about Sadiq, but that's not who's supposed to be right next. It's supposed to be somebody named Tori, right? Okay, so but but you s introduced us to Tori in. I know we know about Tori and Raji's story. 
Right. But did we hear about her before? Yeah. So she was in Love's an Eligible Receiver. And she was possibly in in zone love so she we possibly have heard about Tori for the first time in 2017 but she was back burner you know i knew she was coming but she was back burner um and then right right when i was done with when i was done with uh, <clears throat> love and rhythm and blues and i knew that you know ck3 was next i was mm-hmm. saying i'm gonna i'm gonna take i'm gonna clear my mind and deal with tori um and it just, they did not speak. They did not speak enough. And, and Ashton ain't say nothing. Ashton ain't say nothing. So that's not, I didn't even know his name. I, I didn't know his name at all. Like I knew nothing about him. And um, I just knew about Tori. I didn't even know, like Ashton had a girlfriend, like this guy had a girl. I, I didn't know anything. So um, uh, what you gonna call it, um, definitely while I was, you know, knee deep in the Sadiq series, Tori spoke more, and I finally, I remember telling CCJ, I got him, babe. I got him. <laughs> oh, I know who he is. His daddy owns B-Way Burger. <laughs> so it was really exciting. And then a lot of, you know, a lot of it develops as, you know, as I'm recording them, like as I am, you know, in into, you know, writing their story. So. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, I will say this. Um for the first time ever, I, I almost feel like I should I should have waited until the last story because normally I don't and I'm not going to this this time either. I don't mm-hmm. normally beast you for like okay where's 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 book three where's book three right but that's how I'm feeling right now like God dog yeah you know it's crazy like I really I don't get offended when because I'm hearing dang I feel like I've been hearing <laughs> since um. I don't want to lie. I think it was before Love and Rhythm and Blues, but it was definitely after, I believe it could have been around Way With Love. I started hearing people say, how many books are in this series? <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah, and I'm, you know, I, I don't give dates, although I always have them in mind, but I, I, I'm i more than likely up until now. I, I, I had a great record at predicting how many books would be in the series. Mm-hmm. And I'm hearing more and more people saying like, well, I'm going to wait till the end and wait until it's done. And I, honestly, I feel like that's not my business to have an opinion on either way as a reader. Mm-hmm. Um, I know I'm a reader too, and I've had to wait years, which is not which is not cool for subsequent releases. Like that's not cool. Um, so when people say that, I, I definitely respect them. But the cool thing about it is they buy the book up front. So that is my saving grace that they right. When it comes out, and they just they just bank them until you know they can read it. The bad thing about it, though, now that I am speaking and I do have people listening, is that I don't have your feedback. Like while I'm on it, and 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 I'm sure everyone who can hear my voice as a reader, you have that experience of reaching out to an author once you discover them, and and you discover a project that they wrote a year, two, three, four, five, twenty years ago. Mm-hmm. So in love with the, these set of characters, right? Mm-hmm. You you interface with that author. I'm gonna keep it a book. I'm not, I'm over them. I love them, <laughs> but mm-hmm. don't come to me now. I'm talking about Stanton. I, I don't. I'm not gonna give you as much passion as I'll give you for Ashton. You know, so that's the type of thing. You kind of need that energy. You know, you need that. Right. You need that energy as an artist to 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 for your 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 loyal ones and for everybody to tell you what they think as you're putting it out. You know what I mean? Because I'll right. be with you. I went, I rolled right into writing book three and I knew I wasn't going to take any time off because I've been writing slow for the past two years. I don't know why, but I knew I wasn't going to take off any time in between, but I literally rolled in. That book came out on Saturday on Monday. Actually, Monday I was supposed to start writing. I didn't start writing until Tuesday, but I was doing other things to lead up to the writing. Um, But I rolled right into writing, but it it fuels you like people's feedback and their their hunger for it. So Mm -hmm. I guess that is the downside of it, but you know, I think that's personal. As readers, you know how we, we like yeah, what we like, you know? Yeah, it is because normally what I'll do is I'll buy them and read them. Well, you know what I do normally. Mm-hmm. People don't know. I I I want to blame you too, but it's not really your fault that now I'm on this Kindle Unlimited because for years, Love will tell you and other friends will tell you I wasn't with Kindle Unlimited. No, I want my books. I want them in my Kindle. I want to keep them. I don't want them. It's not that's a library to me, and I don't want them and blah blah blah. And then I started reading some other stuff, and it was like, well, I really, you know, yeah, let me get it. I'll get it. 
no, I think I got suckered with one of their deals, with one of their ninety nine cent for or two ninety nine, whatever it was for three months, and then it just started, and I just never got rid of it. So normally I'll do it under Kindle Unlimited, read it, and then I'll buy it. So mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, double, double, like double dip. I told people to do that. Yeah, yeah, Somehow. yeah. Like, so, mm-hmm. um, and then when the third one comes out or the fourth one. <laughs> no. <laughs> However it goes, I'll go back and I'll read the ones previous up leading up to the last one that I'm on all the way on point. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to do that again, of course, anyway. But I am beasting like, oh, my God, especially the way it ended. But we're not going to jump on the way it ended just yet. Because right. um, that was Jesus. That was a lot. Yeah. That was a lot. So. Yeah. Okay, so we just tell us a little bit. Have you a little? Well, you did. You tell us a little bit about Tori mm-hmm. and how she's from Millville. And now, is Millville for real? Is that a real? I learned about it when I was an undergrad. It's a real place. I tried to stay true to its form. Like Millville is in a county that has lots of prisons and jails, like in in, in state prisons, right? They could possibly okay. that county could possibly have a, a federal prison, but it it is. So either you are in the prison system as a corrections officer. Like I've had conversations with people from Millville, and I needed to know what was the racial culture like because there there is a lot of white people and black people, they're all the same class. You're not going to find any rich people, period, in Millville mm-hmm. that I'm aware of. Um, and I was told there is a tad bit of racism, but for the most part, <laughs> when I moved to South Jersey, I learned a lot about interracial dating and just the culture of it. I don't live here. I'm like 35 minutes from Millville. But Millville is a real place. And then before that, I think they had like a glass industry where they had glass warehouses where, you know, a lot of people, locals were employed. But then when I moved down to South Jersey, I realized a lot of people are employed, um, uh, not exactly where I am, but a little a little uh, south of me, they're employed by the casinos. And it's a huge business. Like it's, you know, they rotate them and everything. So I, tr- I stay true to what Millville is. But Millville, they may not have like, again, that affluent population, but they're not dumb people. They're not hood people. They are articulate people. Like I, you know, I'm always paying attention to dialect and all that other stuff. So I did struggle with that in terms of writing Tori, but Tori also has a mentality of she shuts down. So she doesn't give you a lot of color. Like she's just like, uh, shrug it. She shrugs a lot, you know, but, um, but even with her cousins, I did relax their language. But when I met people from Millville, they, they weren't dumb. They weren't, they were, they, they, they were able to articulate themselves well. So mm-hmm. the only struggle, but Millville is a real place. Yes. Okay. Now I don't, I don't, I don't get the sense that Tori is dumb. Mm-hmm. I would say more sheltered. She's not yeah. She's, to, she's not cultured. To a degree. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. And she's um, very, you know, she's very brash. She's not, um, um, not soft and pink she's not polished you know i think that is you know what it is but again in millville you, you ain't gonna have no millionaires or no half million you know you did this I, I, well I, yeah because she said her cousins go to the casinos to come up on uh-huh. some guys on me on guys yep. thinking that that's rich until that she come, up. Mm-hmm. come across ashton uh-huh. so um you know i feel so i want to say i feel so connected i i I can feel Tori. Like, I'm like, oh, gosh, she's a sweetheart, but she's tough. You know, it's yeah. like you, I feel for her. And, well, I told you, I, y'all, I was, I, I was telling love, I said, I'm, I'm nervous. I said, I'm so nervous. <laughs> I was laughing at you so hard. I'm, I'm, I'm nervous and I'm anxious because I know something is going to, like, like, I'm just waiting for the other shoe to drop. And I'm only like 40% in thinking, Oh, the shoe is going to drop any minute. Oh my God, something is going to happen. Something. And and the only other time I felt like that when my nerves was anxious like that. Mm-hmm. So yes, I tell you, I, I've been reading, I've read all of Love's books was when, I'm going to go all the way back because I, and I told her this, I was anxious like this when my nerves was bad when um, Asmir and Raina got married. <laughs> oh, and man. I just knew <laughs> the police, the feds was coming on their <laughs> yacht. I'm going to ruin their wedding. I, I mean, when I finished that scene, it was almost like, whew, oh, Lord, they made it through. They made it through this part. Okay, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah, so this time I was I was just like, oh, Avery is going to do something so bad. I just knew, like, further along than later later than yeah. what she, you know, than what she did. Yeah. Um, and I had no, and I, I'm sorry, y'all, if y'all haven't read it, I'm going to be dropping some spoilers, so you might want to dip mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, if you're waiting, everybody. and if you're waiting until the end, if you're waiting until book three, you'll forget all of this anyway. Right. But, um... <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea Norma Jean, I'll just say like this, I had no idea you threw us. Cause we know, I don't think anybody realized Norma Jean was going to, <laughs> Tara said, leave now. Yeah. Me um, now. <laughs> <laughs> that is my girl. That is my girl. That's my heart right there. Yeah. But I, I don't I, think I, we knew Norma Jean was going to be the catalyst behind it. Yeah. And that I started seeing stuff like she's awfully possessive for somebody who yeah. they're no longer, you know, together or sexually active yes yeah Yeah. and and i felt like he saw her truly as a friend even when she would flirt with him he would say girl you did he did and i didn't realize until literally probably possibly the first mm, one of the first few scenes i wrote uh, um in our muted recklessness um or one of the the the, the first long scene i wrote was was that uh things pre-thanksgiving Dinner her house. I had no idea she had feelings like that for him. I, I felt. I, I, see, I, 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 I knew. Okay, I knew she had a plan for him, right? I knew she had a plan because I remember when we were talking, she first brought up, you know, Tori, and she said, "Is that a boy or something like that?" Norma Jean was saying, "Yeah, she had a plan, a broken woman. She was a broken woman, and I knew she." She, I knew she felt like maybe one day, maybe one day, but I didn't know she was being strategic about it until I wrote that scene. Because I'm saying a lot of stuff you don't know until you're like there. Mm-hmm. And I wrote the scene and I felt like she was like really needy, really needy. And like you really flew flew to a house that you bought. And that's not a small house she got. That's not a cheap house she got. That area where she bought the house is a, it's a very affluent. So you did all of this and you're flying in for this boy and and the way she was saying, stay, like, stay, let's do this. And it's just like, you don't know that this boy sitting up here telling you that he, he's he he's got feelings and possibly in love with some girl his age. Like, you don't get that. And after I wrote that scene, like, that just stuck with me. I'm like, yo, what the F is you doing? Oh, that's a joke. Oh, God, let me not say that. <laughs> yeah, I got to stop. I mock people. And then it becomes part of my vocabulary. I got to tell you about that. Remind me to tell you about where that comes from. <laughs> like, Norma, what are you doing here? Like Norma Jean, what are you doing here? So I was, I was a little taken aback by that too. But I feel like I knew she was going to be the person. It was going to either be two things. I, I knew, but I, I knew I had to just like just go through the motions with them. But mm-hmm. I knew she was going to be the person that was going to like just fully tell Avery everything. And I felt like, and I still don't know. I still won't know until I get. get further into book three, if Avery had an idea, like did Avery have an idea, like there was something more going on than him just, you know, looking out for the tomboy because Avery, <clears throat> so. I think so. We were supposed to have a conversation after I finished reading, but this week has been, ma- hell, oh, wow. I'm just going to be outright and say this week has been hell. My co-teacher that's in here too, Gates, was, she, she could attest to it. This week has been pure hell for us. We've been in Zoom meetings. One start at nine, the next one is at 10. You might get a little break and then you got another one at uh, 12.30 and that one is from 12.30 to 2.30 and then they want you to do stuff until um, you're done for the day. And it has been pure hell this week. So, um, I forgot my whole thought. Oh, we were supposed to have a conversation about you possibly doing something else with yeah. Avery's mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. character. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> see, she's, uh, Gates is saying hell week. Yes, yeah, for sure. I see uh-huh. So, um, oh, yes, <laughs> I, I get the sense that, that from reading it, especially reading, rereading, because I mm-hmm. went back, I did it backwards. I told you I was going to read the book one and then go into book two. I didn't do that. Mm-hmm. I read book two and then read book one. Mm-hmm. Um, I did it that way and a lot of stuff made sense to me because you know stuff ahead of time, but then it's like all these aha. So, like, um, like the moments. first the first book in the series you read was book two. 
No. Oh, okay. I read yeah. book one a while mm-hmm. ago. Yeah, you you know, when it first came out. Got it. When it first came out. Mm-hmm. Um, no, Terry Lynn, I'm not the cat. We're Atlanta Public Schools. Anyway, I'm, I'm not supposed to tell nobody where. I don't tell people where I work. <laughs> 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 but I, I, yeah, I'm Atlanta Public Schools. So, um, no, no, no. I read book one. Let me clear that up. I read book one. Got it. And you wanted to reread it before you started book two. I got it. Right. So that I was more prepared for this. But I'm glad I read. I couldn't help it. Book two dropped and I was on it. Got it. And then I went back and then... Um, yeah, I went back and a lot of stuff made made sense. Like, um, am mm-hmm. I gonna, I'm going to say his name wrong. Is it Tyler? Tyler? Tyler Thompson? Who that? No, that's not his name. What's his name, yeah. love? Oh, um, Thomas. Yeah. Thomas. Yeah, I'm sorry. Is it? It's Tyler Thomas, right? Yeah, I'm almost positive. It's Tyler. Tyler Thomas. So that, that makes sense. Josh, now you got me begging. Oh, geez. I'm sorry, but that make but now that makes sense. That makes sense that he ended up being his mentor after yeah. things went. You know, he had to go a different route career wise. Right. That makes it makes sense that he was so captivated, you know, with him and that he was, um, you know, um, he later knew who he was. He yeah. Became- Tyler Thomas, you had to look it up. Josh, you had got me crossing my eyes. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it made sense how he circled back once he lost his football career and he became, you know, uh, a journalist. He likes he liked writing, he liked mm-hmm. reading, you know. Um, and I was happy that Tori was able to see that. So it kind of made sense, but I don't think you were that was supposed to make sense. Um, I feel like you know, with book one, a lot of people said, Love, I didn't get it all. Like I I don't know. Like it's it's hard for me. <laughs> give you like my opinion because I don't know. And then the way you ended book one, it was just like, what in the world has happened? And once you read book two, that's when the connection is made. So yeah. I'm, yeah. So I'm going to have to go back and reformat um, only because of the links. If it wasn't for the links, I would just be like, oh, well, you know, you get what you get, you know, but it, the, the links are messed up. And I really had to wrap up book one when I did because for, because I took too long to put it out. And um, but, no, I, but I think the I think like somebody who is just saying the setup. It's, that's somebody named Sharon Heller saying the setup. I think I hey, think. Sharon. See, I can't see all of you. Just explain that if you did not register, if you will, um, and you just join. <laughs> it just says Facebook user, and it's just like a an empty avatar. So yeah. I don't see some some of who you are. Um, if I didn't shout you out, that's probably it's probably because I can't see it. Josh can see you, but I can't. Yeah, because I got my. I'm looking down at my phone too, because I got it on my phone. So um, I'm looking. So yeah. Anyway, <laughs> what so, I was gonna say too prior to that was I have a feeling that Avery does have an idea. This is just my personal opinion <laughs> because she has so. Unless I'm missing something, why would you have so much animosity against someone who is per se beneath you? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and you just look at her, you know, and and, and and it gripes my spirit when she calls her disease. That just <laughs> irks me to no end. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I I mean, there are people like that. I mm-hmm. mean, you you'd be surprised. Um, <laughs> as young as fourth grade, <laughs> that you just got these mean kids. They just mean and you can tell you can tell you're gonna grow up to be mean oh that's rochelle rochelle is here too they're gonna grow up to be our rochelle rochelle um they're gonna grow up to be mean girls like avery so i just have just her animosity towards her is just so yeah it's like what is it that you why does she grab your gear why does she grind your gear so much why right Right. what is it about tori because tori in all in all aspects tori has nothing She's mm-hmm. she's here on a scholarship. You've already said that. Mm-hmm. Um, we know she was she came real busted in the raggedy weave and the whole nine. Mm-hmm. So talking shoes, mm-hmm. right? So what do you have against her? So I thought, yeah, she. You, you think she's somebody says she's intimidated? Oh, that's Anencia saying she thinks that. Um, I have to remember. I put my camera on the other side. Uh, she's intimidated. Can you see? Oh, that's no, Anencia here. Miller. Hey! Oh, this is dope, Josh. I think she. I know, right? <laughs> from the jump, um, 
Yeah, and I'm I'm curious to know if that were the case. And that is something that I've been trying to assess since book one. And mm -hmm. um, I guess I'll find, I'm, I'm, and it's inevitable, I'll find out soon. You know what, uh, Maisha? Is my saying that right, Maisha? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't. I don't. I feel like. Um, I exactly. feel like there's something else in her life, like the especially after the scene with her mom, that her family is too invested in her marrying Ashton. Well, I think and it's like she's saying like she was spoon fed. Like you guys are just overly involved in, in her social matters that you shouldn't be, you shouldn't, you know, let her figure it out, you know, with her boyfriend. Um, whereas Ashton, it was, it was great to understand the duplexity of who he is. Mm -hmm. If you know the relationship between the, well, the oranges can be, not all of them are good. Um, but the orange that he, you know, his father bought the house in versus his mom is from Newark. I love that woman. I love Miss Wanda. She's a mess. But her mom, Wanda Lee. Yeah, Miss <laughs> Wanda's from the same project my mom is from, but they're different women. They're totally different women. But Miss Wanda, you know, she's down to earth. Her family, like, there's addiction in that thing that we'll that we'll get into in book three. But she's seen the ugly, you know, of you know people and 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 society. And Tori has been pampered. You know, I mean, I'm lying. Avery has been pampered. Mm -hmm. So. You know, she doesn't. So Ashton can see, you know, he can have a little more patience with the poor girl than Avery can. Avery just doesn't understand poverty. And how could you come here looking like that? How could you go anywhere looking like that? There's just a lack of cultural exposure for this, for this, you know, for this woman. And she's a brat. She's a brat. And, I, you know, I was talking to her when I, when, when her character was coming to me, like, I don't, to me, there are aspects, uh, a, um, God, the kid's name is Ashton. Ashton loved <clears throat> Avery. They had something pure before, you know, um, he found out about Benjamin. They were mm -hmm. really in love. And Avery loves, believe it or not, truly loves Ashton. They had something real. Um, and I feel like so many things happened once Tori came, um, and, but it didn't help that there was already a wedge because of the Benjamin thing. Mm -hmm. and, you know, they were young. They were too young to be talking about marriage so soon after undergrad. Th that's for one, because that's not reality. This guy is going into the NFL. Mm -hmm. You don't need to be talking about no <laughs> marriage. You need to kind of flesh your, flesh your flesh out, you know? Mm -hmm. And you know, for her, she needs to figure out what she's going to do because t I knew that uh, Avery was going to be enveloped into her dad's peanut business. Her dad is a peanut farmer, mm -hmm. and they're a successful one. Um, and that's what that's the business she, you know, she's going to eventually end up going into. So, but she still doesn't know who she is, and you know, so I, I but I feel like it was a very vulnerable time for them, mm -hmm. and <clears throat> and Tori just kind of threw a monkey wrench in there. And I feel like Tori, it was good that Ashton explored Tori. And I hate to say that because <clears throat> obviously he had a girlfriend and you, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to mess up a happy home, but the, the home was not happy. And they were so right. Young. Right. Excuse me. They were so young. I got my wine, Joss. I do too, but you talked about it. So. Yeah. But I, I'm, I'm like hiccuping. So, um, so yes, yeah, so I, I do want to make that clear. They, um, and, and, and Ashton said it. He loves Avery. He does. It's just that he was blindsided. And at this point in time, she doesn't have his priority. And he was going to what he felt. He was drawn to his feelings and his feelings was with Tori. And, and, and then it didn't help that she would badmouth Brick. You don't badmouth your man's family, especially... Oh, Especially man. family that he's you tired. know put with that. that he's tight. That he's that's his best friend. He's yeah. tight with, and you you yeah. you care nothing about him being in jail. You and care nothing about where she was. You know, feel, right, right. And I feel like that was really exasperated her not being supportive of him while he was locked up. And then when he died, because she was upset with Ashton because Ashton wasn't giving her the attention that she wanted. So mm -hmm. you know, I don't think she and Brick got along in the past, but I don't think it was as bad as uh, uh, Avery put on because I think Avery was just upset because she saw she was losing Ashton. She saw that Ashton was distancing you know, himself from her. So it was just a lot of elements at play with these young people <laughs> who, 
people were truly, truly in love. And I think, and I, and I hope, and I'm positive, I should say, most people don't probably don't understand. They really had, a, they really loved each other and were in love and were committed to each other and had a plan to be together forever. Although that's not something I would personally advise, but I became the, the therapist later. <laughs> You're going to have to show me that in book three. Cause right now I'm like, yeah, that's puppy love. Thing, that, it was. And that's the thing. I feel like while it was genuine, because I know my first love, I had no business marrying my first love, and my heart was pure. I gave my heart fully. That was not a game, but I had no business marrying that person, you know? Mm -hmm. so you're absolutely right. It was puppy love, and they needed it. And that's why I think Tori was timely, because she, she showed she showed Ashton a part of his heart and a part of himself, like he said, I'm a better human, that he didn't even know existed. So... Avery was just in love with the fantasy life they lived on campus. They they need to even share the need to even share the athletic facility. Girl, yeah, she was obsessed with not being able to have access to the athletic complex. Okay, so that was a question of mine. And I'm not looking at, I, I did write some notes, but I'm not even looking at them because I knew that our conversation would be authentic and genuine and stuff would just come to me. That was a question of mine as I was reading like, they got, Tori and Ashton got away with, with their, I don't want to call it an affair, their, but their affair. situation. Affair. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> it, doesn't mean, it doesn't mean that it wasn't genuine, but it really was an affair. Okay. They got, a, oh, I'm good. <laughs> they got away with their affair. Friendship. Their friendship. You want to call their it Their friendship. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they got away with it for so long. Like the guard kept their secret. I, oh, I know what I was going to say too. Let me jump back. I just knew after Thanksgiving, his grandmother, no, Christmas, his grandmother was going to be the one to tell. Miss Honey, um, I'm not going to go back and tell Avery that because her thing was he going to marry Avery and that's that. Like, I'm not even okay. going to. I ain't worried about this. Girl. Any, I'm not even going to cause any more confusion. It's, she's already upset with Ashton and it's evident why. I just experienced why. I'm not going to exasperate it by telling her about this. And I don't. Um, I don't even know if she made like, you know, it's not like Avery told her, oh, he's he's creeping around with another athlete. And then she ended up meeting an athlete. She, there wasn't a correlation there. It was just mm -hmm. a girl that should have been with her own family on Christmas instead of here, you know, with my grandson. So, yeah. And then going back to what you were saying on the um, on this sports, uh, the, the, the athletic complex, I think a lot of the staff knew. You know, the, the maybe the even if like the students didn't know because they were too immature to see that Ashton could have fallen for someone like Tori. Mm -hmm. I think Trisha and them knew when they were asked when they were talking to her and doing their evaluation, and they kept looking at each other. It's because they had conversations about Tori behind her back and not malicious ones. Mm -hmm. They don't. They didn't know how to approach her. They wanted to be a support system. They knew that uh, she was their responsibility, but you know, she fell into something with Ashton and they didn't want to push her away. They didn't want to, you know, they didn't want to kind of, you know, blow their opportunity at being, you know, confident, but they knew. They very, mm -hmm. knew. they were trying to ask, well, how did you get home? You know, well, who's this new friend? Right. Ashton Spencer, you know, so they, they knew without her having to tell them, you know, and, and Tori was so involved, her, she and Ashton were both so involved in their affair that they weren't even thinking who who knows but that's how they were able to pull it off in a pool room you know the swimming pool one of the pools yeah stuff like that and it was and then ashton so ashton's apartment building is you know they're not very many very many students there right there's it's mm -hmm. a, lot, a lot of staff there but it's also on the other side of the sports complex so it's not that accessible to <laughs> it's not accessible to um, that accessible, I should say, to uh, Avery. And then plus, Avery was just like, you know, this is he's busy. I don't know what he's doing. Um, you know, sometimes she was probably like, F him. I don't want to be bothered with him or whatever. But she, she, you know, she wasn't just popping up, you know, like that. Because uh, if she did, she would have found some stuff. So, but yeah. Maisha saying Tricia knew Tricia knew about the concert. How? I don't know. How did she know about? How she know about the concert? Because um, they were probably talking. They. I don't. Oh, about uh, Tori being at the concert. Yeah, she uh, Tori could have mentioned it. She could have mentioned that she, you know, oh. she went. You know, that could have been, you know, something that came up in a conversation. You know, you know, innocently or whatever. And people talk. You know, just like the, um, you know, Samantha knew and the, 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 the sign yeah. You know, they knew. Like, you know, word got around. You know, 
And it was just a matter if someone mature enough to say it is possible that he would sleep with her. You think there's no way that he can sleep with, you know, someone like that. Yeah, he can. And they knew the human side of no pun intended of of Tori. So they were able to put that together. I'm, I'm mm-hmm. almost positive. I'm almost positive. I will say I don't I, I I'm loving that we get to we've heard so much about Sean Nicole and <laughs> And that um, well, at least I'm I'm saying we, but I'm loving that I get to know more about um, Sean Nicole because I don't think she needs a whole story unless she starts talking to you. No. But <clears throat> Sean Nicole is my stylist. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I she knows no story. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm glad that we get to we get now. to see that side of her and how she. You know, even when she told Carmen, y'all need to stop kissing her behind because... Yeah, she wasn't it, like that. She's from Philly. She's a Philly chick now. While her dad, um, I feel like he was he played for the Eagles or something like that. He was a football player. Mm-hmm. While her dad, you know, uh, you know, raised her with, you know, a little bit of affluence and a little bit of money. She's like Ashton. She, her family, her whole family wasn't rich like... Uh, right. Avery had generational wealth. A lot of them did. They had generational wealth, whereas mm-hmm. that's not what um, Sean Nicole came up with. So her thing was like, I, you know, I may have had some of the privilege that you guys had, but you know, this is a bubble we're living in. And she was like really down to earth about it. Whereas Carmen and Andrea, they were just they're still immature. They were growing up trying to find themselves, and I guess they, you know, they they loved uh, Avery Steez or whatever, but. Yeah, um, Shona Cole just kept it a buck and she didn't care, you know. And you know what's crazy? This is, um, I wasn't the mean girl, but I hung around the mean girls. Oh, wow. Like, they took me in, you know what I mean? Like, I was mm-hmm. nice. I don't want to say I'm not, I'm not definitely not a Tory, but they took me in. And actually, one of them is a friend of mine, one of her friends on Facebook. And I, I see she has not changed. Oh wow! She reminds me of an Avery. She has mm-hmm. not changed, and you and sometimes as at the age that I'm in now, and I see her posts, and I just be like, "How did I hang out with you? How did I? Right. How were we friends for so yeah. long through high school, and then even after high school, we both went to mm-hmm. um, a JC first, and I follow right behind mm-hmm. her at the mm-hmm. you know not on purpose, but that's kind of where we ended up. And it wasn't until I graduated with my AA that we kind of went our separate um, ways because then I was, you know, moving on to, you know, other stuff. We mm-hmm. went our separate ways. And then, of course, when Facebook got to popping and you reconnected and it was just like, how did I end up with the mean girl? <laughs> yeah. That's how do you, but you outgrow that. You would think people yeah. outgrow that, but some people don't. And, I'm, and I, I do believe Andrea outgrew out it. I I, I do mm-hmm. believe that. Um, but you see how Tori created those barriers. Okay, if you want to be in my life, and they, and and even Sean Nicole, Sean Nicole, I have to go back. Sean Nicole knows most of the story. Not yes, sure you said knows. you you said she. Tori says she spilled her guts in Vegas. They were drinking, and she told and her the whole story. No, that included Bobby. Oh, okay, okay. But, I want okay. <laughs> And I can tell you, Andrea don't know about Bobby. If Sean, if Sean Nicole knows about, Bobby, I don't know if Sean Nicole. I don't know. I won't know until we start seeing what their chemistry is like nowadays. But I can tell you that Andrea don't know about it. But she, she, I, I think Andrea showed her enough to, to to say, okay, I can trust you. I'll, you know, I'll how I'll, 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 I'll hire you as a consultant or whatever. I just mm-hmm. I don't bring up nothing. Don't bring up how we met. I don't want to hear about that. And they felt like Tori was, you know, they felt like she was being extra, which is why I don't think. Sean Nicole knows about Bobby because if she okay. did, she probably would get for more grace. But I, even when they were exchanging during the photo shoot, I can tell Sean Nicole was like, come on now, you don't, don't Avery, I mean, excuse me, uh, Tori, don't be so extra. Like, you know, don't, <laughs> don't you know, don't be so cold or whatever. Mm-hmm. You're talking, you had a conversation with him. So I guess, you know, you're warming up to it or whatever. And Tori is like, she was serious. So uh, there's a lot, you know, that you know, Tori and Ashton don't know about each other in the interim of those 13 years. There's a lot. Mm-hmm. And Tori made sure she didn't know because she blocked out everything that could have led her to know about. And that, that includes like Andrea, don't bring up Avery. Don't bring up Avery. I don't want to hear about Dre. I don't want to hear about nobody. 
And for Sean Nicole, it was the same thing. So um, it's going to be quite interesting when Corey and Ashton finds out how, you know, what has, what's been going on in each other's lives in these years that they've been absent for each other. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's going to be, yeah. Yeah. Now I believe um, Jimmy knew about Bobby because he was watching her, right? It's a possibility. Yes. <laughs> it's a possibility. Okay. And that's what I'm wondering. And I'm almost, I, I'm almost positive. In fact, that's the next scene I'll be writing. That's the next scene I'll be writing is Jimmy and Ashton about this topic. Um, okay. I, I, but I, I'm like you. My gut tells me Jimmy knew, but I can guarantee you, I know for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure, Tori didn't know Jimmy knew. Jimmy okay. never messed it with Tori. Jimmy never brought it up to Tori. Like, I know this. Right. He never did. Never. Right. So, if, if he knew, he knew enough to just dip his lips and just let it play out. So I, mm -hmm. I won't, I'll, in between this weekend, I got to do some more chess credit. So it won't be tomorrow, but by next week, I'll know exactly what Jimmy, I have a feeling Jimmy knew. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I had a, I have a feeling too. Yeah. <laughs> Benita says Jimmy knew. <laughs> yeah, I, I really do have a feeling. But you know what? Sometimes I think, yeah, I know what's getting ready to happen. And love will throw us that curveball and be like, oh, I didn't there know are that there was. quite a few curveballs. So I'm not going to. Yeah, have yeah. Ashton's dad was a curveball. <laughs> that was a curveball. I'm going to one and I won't have another until I'm done with this because I don't want to, you know, tip my. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, and I don't there want you to. I definitely don't of, want you to. There are a lot of. A lot of there was a lot of miscommunication, lots of you know changing of events. There's just it's just a lot. It's it's just, just quite a few things that I feel like we're gonna feel. Like I knew what was gonna happen. I knew how fast book two was going to end. Like those fast quick scenes mm -hmm. or that progression in terms of what happened after BSU for Tori. And I knew we wouldn't hear anything from Ash. And I knew it would be all about Tori. I knew we were gonna do like a a, a tell me not show me type of mm -hmm. you know uh, receiving of that information. We weren't gonna be in a whole bunch of scenes detailing every emotion, but I knew that that was gonna be very emotional. The loss of Bobby, um, her mom. I knew her mom was gonna go. I knew they were gonna go right behind each other. I knew her mom was gonna be there when you know Bobby came along. Like I knew that their dynamic was gonna change too because she needed Tori, and you know poor. Um, Poor thing, she didn't know how to love Tori. She really, she was pitiful herself. Um, but I feel like they both put aside whatever issues they had to get on. Tori's thing was, I'm going to survive this. I need to get my son. I need to have him safely, and I need to, I need to purge everything that I knew at, from BSU, and I need to get on. So, but I also remember the scene. Just come home from the gym. I don't think it was grocery shopping, and I was saying to CCJ, I gotta go. I have to write this scene and I know I'm going to be emotional. You're probably going to hear back from me. And when I wrote that scene, I didn't, I didn't hit her up, but I cried. Like I cried mm. I woke up in, at the ceiling, but I cried and it was so fast. Like I just, you know, I, I, I wrote it and it was, I didn't feel like I needed to do any more. And I was really happy when I did my final, my final read with mm -hmm. the, the, that quick succession, like the way that, yeah, I, yeah that's the way I knew yeah. that was going to happen. Yeah. This is a very good question. What I couldn't understand about Benjamin was, yeah, if they were broke up and Avery still was chasing Ash, so that means she wanted to be with Ash. So get over it. His obsession for her was border stalkerish. It was, and I, you know, I really don't know um, what was his beef with Ashton other than when Ashton came to BSU, he knew his potential and he knew that Ashton was going to be the next him, if not bigger. That's the mm -hmm. only thing I'm getting out of that. I may not be 100% correct. Cause I'm like, yo, why is, why are you so fixated? Because it's clear to me, although Avery made a confidant out of him and a friend, Avery didn't sleep with Benjamin. I, I, at least I don't, I, I just don't, I don't, I don't believe. And I've been saying this since book one. I don't believe Avery slept with him. Avery's heart was with Ashton. It's just that Ashton, you mean she didn't sleep with him anymore after that. After that, yeah. During okay. this whole this this school year, these two semesters, she did not sleep with Benjamin. That's not what he was for. But I feel like you spent too much time with you. You know, it was very inappropriate 
the the time you spent with him and the relationship you took on with him, knowing his history with 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 Ashton. Right, right. And like Ashton said, um, he he confided in her the hell that he was putting him through when they were pledging. Yeah. So it's like, uh, why would you do that? And the thing, and the thing is, uh, uh, Benjamin. You know, had you know, she had she had known Benjamin since she was a kid. You know, mm -hmm. their fathers. You know, Benjamin's father works for a uh, uh, Avery's father. Like in the, he's like a if, if Avery's father is the CEO, he's like the CFO or something like that. So she knew him for a number of years. So yeah, it was really wrong. Like, why would you sleep with this guy when you you know you're talking to Ashton? You know, but Ashton wasn't the big man on campus at the time. Um, even though um. Benjamin had graduated, but Benjamin was, you know, that guy. He had that, you know, he had that title at the time. But Terry uh, asking questions that we can't, we don't know yet. We it ended. We don't yeah, know what happened. Terry. So what? Wait a minute, where is she? She just moved. Wait, it is. Uh, so uh, uh, I'm sorry, y'all. Yeah. I'll put my hand uh, in the way. Yeah. So what happened to him after the the attack? I don't know all that happened to him. Um, I know what happened after the incident, like. You know, like right after, like when Ashton went to the hospital, um, when he was in the hospital, I do have an idea of what happened then. But what happened to um, uh, Benjamin? I, I'm I'm curious. I want to know, like, how? You know, did he go to jail? He need to, or somebody need to break him he up. Wanda sue him. <laughs> this this look at your sweet little Sean. Look at your sweet <laughs> Sean. Ah, Sean sounds like jazz. That's what Jag always say. He needs his ass beat. <laughs> <laughs> that we we crack up. We be waiting for her to say he needs his ass beat. <laughs> mm -hmm. But um, but yeah, like yeah. So it's I'm I'm curious to see too. Like how did Benjamin? I don't think he got away with it. But I don't think if he was brick, I don't think he would have gotten with, with someone like with bricks. Mean you know would have gotten you know in jail. But I, I don't mm -hmm. know. I have to. I'm I'm curious to find that out too. Interesting. Interesting. I don't know, you guys. No, Maisha, I don't think uh, Booby and June got on um, Pettiford. I don't think so. Pet uh, Pettiford, his money is, is you know, got, he got a little money. His dad got a little money. He's been working with at that peanut factory for a while. So he got, he's sitting on some. I, no, I think by the time, if June and them came out, if they came out, Pettiford was gone. <laughs> by the time they reached it. <laughs> 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 was gone. He's not, he's not, you know, you know, I don't, his resources are long. So I don't think, um, no, I don't think they got to him. I don't know. But I, I'm, I'm curious to find out myself, like exactly what happened. Um, yeah. So like, even like you said, they were just young and they wasn't paying no attention. They was out there on that beach house in Mason. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, y'all. And Mason, he's getting faded and stuff because, like, she creeped around straight to his room and they chilled all night. Just, you know. They and nobody, nobody knew. Okay. I can't, I guess I do understand to a degree, but Samantha being so mad as she was, it was like, why? She was, she took, she was over the top with it and she felt yeah, that like, we're I, not with Samantha, that immaturity. I had someone do that to me before, too. When we were young, we were like, um, I was, um, I was, I just finished high school and I was going to college. <laughs> and my I'm sorry, I'm laughing at Anuncia some of her husband. We should see her husband um, looking at her hollering about Avery and at a boy. Oh, <laughs> go but ahead. I'm sorry. Having an old friend. Um, I remember having an old friend that I was like really, really close to while we were in high school, and she knew about my high school, you know, love, and then. Another girl came into the picture. Oh God, I don't want to spend time on this, but she was friends with her before me, but they had lost touch. And then she came to me and she was like, yo, you know, love, why didn't you tell me that this, that, and the third about you and the guy or something like that? And I was just like, I don't owe you that. Like, I, I don't owe you any information. Like, first of all, we were not, we're, we're, even though we've not had a beef, we haven't had a falling out or anything like that. You and I are not besties like that anymore. Like, we're not cool. I don't owe you that. Like, I understand that you guys used to be besties and all that stuff before me and this guy started dealing with each other. But I don't owe you any information. And I just kind of got those vibes from Samantha. because I. But I feel like in Samantha's defense, she knew T Tori was weird. She knew she was, right. was extra weird. She knew that Tori was the underdog on the campus. And she wanted to be by her side because she experienced <clears throat> 
bit of what Tori went through. She didn't experience it all, but she experienced a little bit of what Tori went through the year before when she was a freshman because they were picking on her at this, you know, HBCU about being mixed. So mm -hmm. her thing was like, even with my friends, I try to let you hang out with my friends and you couldn't just tell me, I wouldn't have judged you. And I believe Samantha would not have judged her. I don't think Samantha would have been happy. I don't think she would have judged her, but it's just like, Ashley. But I feel like Samantha would have went back and ran her mouth. I don't, I don't know why. I, I, I personally like don't think Samantha would have. I don't know. But I know that Samantha wouldn't have been happy with it because she probably would have felt like, Tori, you're better than Ashton. Because she doesn't know Ash. She doesn't know the, the you know, the tender side of Ashton that we all now know. She right. doesn't know that side of Ashton. She just knows that, you know, the a-hole side of him that she experienced probably the year before when his whole crew was like, you know, clowning her. Mm -hmm. But I still feel like, I feel like if Tori if they both would have slowed down and they both, especially Samantha, if you just would have chilled out and maybe if Samantha didn't end up pregnant, I feel mm -hmm. like you've gotten over that. You would have seen that you made too big of a deal over nothing. And especially right. because you were creeping with Dre and you knew Dre wasn't wifing you. You knew that. So right. why you weren't exactly doing Dear Diary with Tori about your affairs with him. So why would you expect that from her? But I feel <clears> like people <throat> are young. They're dumb. And they may have these unrealistic expectations. And I feel like that is what Samantha had of T Tori. Because I think she believed in Tori. I think she she genuinely liked her. And I believe she had a, per a perception of Tori that she felt betrayed. It wasn't even about Ashton. It was just like, yo, you screwing like that? Like, I, you know, I, did, I didn't know. But, you know, I think she was extra about it. Yeah. And I'm now, that did blow my mind. Him I'm not off. turning in his paper to spend another semester yeah. with Tori was such a vibe. Yeah. 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 That 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 I wasn't ready for that. Yeah. I picked up on it when he was like, You just don't know. I was like, Oh. Right. And even when she was like, he didn't. Did he? he right. Didn't. He wouldn't have. Right. I was like, uh oh. Mm-hmm. I had to see. Um, I had to consult with uh, Tina. Um, Tina. Mm -hmm. Tina. Tina Young. Um, because I had to research what is a friggin' um, potential uh, NFL player like we. He, he had a promising career. Ashton knew he was going to the NFL. Like he knew it. It was already planned. Like he was a for sure shot. But I needed to like, what is the schedule? Like I was even talking to one of my trainers who went to uh he played football at undergrad, but like and he told me, he said, You gotta, you're not gonna have any time to be fooling around. You gotta make time to fool around, like, you know. And then mm -hmm. Tina was telling I had to ask Tina, okay, Tina. And I had to tell her that part up front. And I don't usually do that. But I said, Listen, Tina, he's gonna have this important paper that he's going to blow. Because he wants to stay another semester and, and she had to break it down. And she was like, well, if this is what you want to do, th this is what's coming up in his football career. So we kept going back and forth for months. Like, I'll leave it alone and then I'll come back. Like, so what did you say? So anyway, when she proved it and she didn't come back to me with like, yo, this is unrealistic. I was like, oh, thank God. <laughs> because I had to <laughs> about what his schedule was like. Like. Mm -hmm. he, yeah, he he sacrificed that paper, but he really didn't have time, you know, to be under her the way he wanted to. And he knew mm -hmm. that he still wanted all the time he can have with her. So he made, and that wasn't a much of a sacrifice for him because just like his um his academic of liaison or whatever said, like, yeah, you're arrogant because you got the money to bring these trainers up here. Most don't have that money. Mm -hmm. And at, like, oh, well, I, I said what I said. <laughs> Sean yeah. said she wanted Ashton to turn that paper in. Girl, no. He wanted to be with Tori. He wanted to be with Tori. He wanted to be with Tori. I it get it. Matter. It was just a couple of weeks out of that last <clears throat> semester. He wanted He wanted to be with Tori. I laughed so hard when he said Ms. Wanda cussed him out until she lost her signal on the <laughs> Ms. Wanda? Yeah. I, I know, know she was stopping her. It's and what's crazy is like the way you write it, I can visualize Miss Wanda stomping around that ship, like cussing Ms. everybody Wanda? in sight out. <laughs> you know, that Ashton Spencer, let me tell you. <coughs> right. And I the last scene I actually wrote, which was a few days ago, I've been working on my um my my professional certification these past couple of days, but the last scene I wrote was when Miss Wanda found out about Bobby. 
And it was a lot she didn't know. And the way she took, you know, the way she responded to it, I was really proud of her because at first I was thinking like, Wanda, you, you, you got to chill. Like you can't, you know, this is, mm-hmm. and, but she, she had it. She had it. She had it in the bag. And <clears throat> the way it turned out, I love the way she responded to it because I was just like, Miss Wanda was like huffing and puffing. She was like threatening Tori's people. <laughs> <laughs> she told them I'm from Prince Street Projects. I'll have my nieces come up here and wear your ass out. Let me in. Like Wanda went off when she went to, after she learned about Bobby and she went to go talk to Tori about it. And I was like, Wanda, Wanda. And it turned out to be what I felt was appropriate. So okay, good. I wrote. Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, good. Okay, no more spoilers. I'm not. I'm trying to stay away from. Um, <laughs> the the future and we are at an hour y'all and i told love i wasn't gonna hold her um <clears throat> past the hour because i know me and love can get to talking and going okay. on and on uh-huh. and on so and to be honest with y'all neither one of us have eaten <laughs> <laughs> yes we were talking about like oh no i can't i can't i gotta wait so um if y'all have any quick questions that do not pertain to next week, I mean next week, Jesus. Next book. Next, <laughs> the next book. Go ahead and shoot them in there real quick. <laughs> Marsha talking about no. I know. Go. No, don't go. I when know. Is what a spoiler when when Wanda, I guess Miss Wanda, Wanda going out? off. I don't think that's a spoiler. No, because I mean it's an ev- it's, it's I mean it's a book. given. It's a given that they're going to find out about Bobby yeah. at some point. That's and I'm gonna be honest with you. Can I say this though? Before that scene, I wrote. Feel free. I wrote, no, right. Before that scene, I wrote when Ashton found out about Bobby. So maybe that is a spoiler. Too, people were saying like, "Oh, you know, he got her pregnant on purpose." And one of my sister readers hit me up, and I said, "Ashton didn't do that." I shouldn't didn't get her pregnant on purpose. So if that's you guys consider that a spoiler, I'm sorry. I just have to say, but Ashton did not do that. He did not get her pregnant. But somebody on asked, I didn't get a chance to put it up, but somebody did um ask or said that he did it on purpose. He ain't stinting. He ain't stinting. No, he's so not stinting. And that's what I was saying. Like, no, that's not that scenario. Ashton honestly respected her. And that's what I loved. Oh my God. I love right. the ending how he told her, I need you to hope. Like you don't have any hope. And it's very dangerous when you don't have, like, you can do so much, Tori, if you just believed in yourself and you just had an imagination about your future. And that's what Tori learned from BSU. Like, mm-hmm. how to hope and how to, like, you are somebody, you have a talent in your hands, and there's so much you can do. There's so much you can offer this world. So Ashton would have never got her pregnant. Like, and plus, Ashton was, like, he had his agenda. He wanted Tori with him because you heard him say, what are your plans this summer? Because, you know, Ashton, especially after he got drafted, you know, I don't know. I still don't know how, like, if he started moving up to Connecticut yet or whatever. But when he had asked her that when they were in Mason Beach, his thing was, as I'm moving to, you know, well, once I get settled in and once she's done, if she's not, you know, training or anything during the summer, or she won't be training during the whole summer, she could come stay with me because he knew that she didn't want to be home. So he knew that if mm-hmm. she wanted to, she could have been with him. And that's what he was looking forward to. Like, hey, I don't, I don't know how far I thought this was going to go. I don't know if I thought this through, but I'm not done. Like, just come, just come stay with me. And that's, that's, that was his thinking. So, but no, he absolutely would not have done that to Tori. He respected Tori. Um, she was an un, unexpected, you know, emotional roller coaster for him, but he did not do that on purpose. So anyway, I wrote that scene. But my issue, you saying he ain't pull out, but they use condoms and no, he didn't do, she said he wasn't lame. Not, yeah, that was not. I didn't, <clears throat> I never got that. That was on purpose. No. I got that. You know, so I've heard that, that, and I was just like, "Oh my yeah, god!" I've heard. Um, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if you've ever heard, because love you, you're in the um in the church world like me. Helen Baylor's. You, are you familiar with Helen Baylor? No, I'm not. Mm-mm. You're not. Okay, she has a testimony how her and her um her child's father, her first child, he never penetrated her. It was kind of the same thing like Ashton and Tori, and she ended up pregnant. Sperm mm-hmm. gonna do what it's gonna do. It's gonna make its that way where we wanna like make it. And Parker, when she got pregnant, mm-hmm. it wasn't from penetration. Right. <clears throat> right. So it can happen. It yeah. can happen. It can happen. 
But anyway, love, I thank you so much. I feel like there's so much more, but I'm not going to do this. Yeah, so maybe. You, see, Terry, you see my Terry? How do you say he respected her when he wouldn't cut Avery off? I think he did cut Avery off emotionally. I think he did. He, had, he, he tried to cut. You gotta, so you got to remember in the beginning, Avery, he was ending it when they came back exactly. for the fall semester. He, oh, he, she he wanted emotionally to, withdrew from, from Avery that summer. Like that happened the like, summer, right. He was, he had already split from her, but his thing was, yeah, he, he, uh, that's a valid argument. You should have just said, no, we're over. Okay. We're over, 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 over. But he wasn't expecting anything but Tori. He wasn't, but it wasn't, but it was her birthday that after her birthday and and after how close like he wanted tori and he and tori made it very clear I want you too his thing was i know tomorrow is avery's birthday but i gotta break it off with this girl because i can't control myself with tori and he said he wanted to be done with that before he made that move with tori so yeah um, and it was it was horrible for me to get on <clears throat> avery's birthday but none of us really cared none of us really cared about you know avery but yeah, yeah, I no, he did, he did, but they keep they they kept up the facade. I think that's a part of the immaturity. Yeah, you're right, Terry. They did, they did, but but Tori didn't want that information out either. She didn't, she didn't because she knew that they were going to drag her regardless. And, and also, Tori had an obsession with Avery and Ashton being this supreme couple. It was an mm -hmm. obsession. It was just like if she had a big sister. The big sister would have said, you know, they're human like you. You know, they're young like you. Like, there's no guarantee. But her thing was they're a beautiful couple, like physically, mm -hmm. idealistically. And she was obsessed with that. And if she could have let that go, she would have seen that Ashton has switched gears. And Ashton, while he probably wasn't going to be proposing to Tori when, he, you know, according to his and a reschedule, his he wanted to be friends with Tori. He wanted to be with Tori, but Tori, Rochelle, don't be gassing Terry up. I'm done. I'm so done. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I cut you off. Know. Rochelle down there talking about Terry. No, don't be I gassing Terry you. up. Don't do it. Yeah, he barely. And someone, but I can't see who that was. And they said he barely gave Avery the time of the day. Emotionally, he was done with her, and that sports oh, complex see. helped. That sports complex because that's where they spent most of their athletes. They are tier one athletes. That's where they spent most of the time. Avery didn't have access to it. So right. It helped. Terry just I wants mean, to uh, keep talking. That's all she wants me to do. I know. That was um, Allegra, Allegra TJ Williams that says he yeah, barely gave oh Avery the time God, of day. Yeah, yes. She's one of them too. She's one of those new, that new wave of vocal followers. Hey. <laughs> See, I can't see you guys' name, some of you. Terry Lynn's, oh yeah, she's on the, she said the whole campus was obsessed with Ashton and Avery. Everyone the whole campus them. was. Yeah. And, and what made Tori different was that Tori didn't know she had nothing to reference in terms of real relationships. Like she didn't, especially in this, to this, you know, degree, because they are, they had a community there and their community was BSU and everybody bought into it. And she did not want to be her mother. She did mm -hmm. not want be the person to break it up and she didn't want to be the person to be a part of the confusion and all that she did not want to be that so you know it was it was a it was a horrible obsession but it, it was that's what it was she didn't know any better right Tara she didn't know any better low self-esteem can do that to you yeah, right so who yeah because who was there to teach her that stuff right. her mom wasn't and then her her Margaret was you know doing yeah. the best that she could so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I guess that's why it's like I could I could I don't want to say I could relate to Tori, but I could I feel for Tori. Right. You know, like and the way that she has yes. Yeah, yeah, the way she has um she she took Tyler Thompson's book and was like, you know what? Thomas, I'm sorry, I said Thompson. Mm -hmm. She took his she took you know, at the end when you did the succession and it was like, Yes, okay, all right, cool beans. Because she had the she didn't realize it, but she had the tools to mm -hmm. she had been given that time there. In her subconscious, it was building her greatness. Like she, the greatness was within her, and it was, and it was at the perfect time. Instead of her staying in that apartment and allowing depression to overtake her, mm -hmm. she, she shook that thing off, and that's why I said she's so badass. I love that underdog. I love it. Yes, yes. I'm out. So now I'm, you know, I'm anxious for December. I mean, for Who a lot that, of reasons. Joss? Who said huh? uh, we didn't ask about the children? Who said that, Joss? Who is that? The last comment. Y'all, we didn't ask about the children. Oh, <laughs> Anicia. Anicia no. Miller. Anicia said that? 
child. Yeah. I'm not talking about that. That I'm not, you know. Look, I'm, I'm, look, look, what I'm children? Like, what you talking about? What I'm children? No. What I'm talking about. <laughs> we don't know nothing about no children. You're supposed to skip, you know, no children, no children. No, no. What y'all talking about, the children? Oh, uh, somebody said, listen, who is that? Oh, Sharon said it's going to be a whole different story. Camigo. Mm. I don't think no romance is going to happen in Camigo. Mm-mm. Huh? What you say? There ain't no romance gonna happen in Camigo. I can tell you that. No romance. It's just okay. Love. I don't know how many sips you've had. We. we... I'm done. I had a whole glass, but I. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Ain't no romance gonna happen. Some things are gonna go down in Camigo. Some interviewing, maybe a little bit of revelation, but uh, but not all of it. All ain't ain't but ain't, ain't, ain't ain't much tea that's gonna be spilled in Camigo. It should mm-hmm. be like just some like he's gonna he's gonna learn about her mom's death and Camigo like stuff like that like things we know you know it's nothing. This I can agree with that Allegra. She said I bet Brick hasn't come to see him since she left. I know I thought about that too. Right? Yeah. No, Tori yeah. doesn't get to punch anybody. The person that Tori is gonna want to punch in book three um, is not gonna be possible. But no, she's not gonna be punching anybody. That's what I, that's another thing I love about Tori. She ain't like me. You know, T- Tori knows how to control her emotions in terms of like violence. She's that's just not who Tori is. She's not Raina, y'all. She ain't Raina, Raina. or Lex. <laughs> right, right, or Lex. Right. She's not Raina or Lex. Very mm-hmm. good. Very, 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 very good. So, love, mm-hmm. it is after eight o'clock, and I so appreciate you. Y'all go ask questions until Jesus comes. So. No, there's no book four. Who asked about that? There's no book four. I got to move on. I got to move on to CK4. Little gangster. Yeah, that's my ride. <laughs> hey, Ross. <Ross. laughs> <I'm here. laughs> Who is that? I'm going to reveal. Is She's he? not going to. Child, you ain't. You might think you're going to reveal. You I want to know. Tell me. Don't. Say it. Just spill she it. She said, say it. Say what you think it is, Anicia. Tori isn't the fighter. Her alter ego is exactly my. She's that's not who the she banger, is. right? The banger yeah. is. Bless it. Who said that, Charles? Anicia. <laughs> <laughs> so again, thank you, love. I thank you, ladies, for joining me this evening for my for me to run my mouth and chat i appreciate it so much no 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 marshall i have to say this because someone someone assumed it's marshall you know I, I finish series before i start another one but that's what i'm saying like there will be no book four because i need to move to ck four so I, I, i'm i'm working on finishing up this series yeah i only do one at a time i, I don't I, I would never do that to you guys i would never do that they go Rochelle. They go Rochelle. Love, are you going to be no? That was in my Rochelle. Need? That was my sister. Um, my sister Rita Deborah. Her her nephew made that. I don't. Yeah, I don't do <clears throat> face mask. Yeah. Okay. All right, y'all. We're gonna end. I'm gonna end the broadcast. <laughs> okay. All right. Because they're gonna have us here unless you unless you. I know. Love, we gotta go. You gotta go too. Okay. You're saying okay, like whatever, Josh. Oh, because I'm reading. Yeah. Wait a minute. Who oh. is that? I want to see what they have to say. They're not going to. Okay. They said, I ain't going to do it. Well, okay. If you're not going to say it now, inbox me. What, you know, what did I, what did I say? I want to know now, actually. <laughs> who is that? Anisia? That I said something. I don't think that was Anisia. The person who said I said something, I slipped, like I slipped up and said something. I want to know what it was. I'm trying to go back up. Let's see. My um... say. Uh, I don't see it though. I don't see it, so I missed it too. Yeah, I don't see it. Um, I think. Oh, I think she gave. So that's Anicia saying the person Tori wants to hit won't be. Oh, okay, yeah, but you don't know who that is. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. What's up with Ashen's grandma? Yeah. Um, I don't know. We'll, we'll definitely see, though. <laughs> yeah, that's that's um that's Effie. That said, mask can be free promotion. Uh huh. That's Effie. 
Oh, my Affy Affy? Yeah. My fellow uh, New Jerseyan? Oh, hey, yeah. Affy. All right. Okay. I'm going to, okay. I'm going to wrap up. Okay. That's it. All right. I love you guys. Thank you so much for having me, Josh, even though I had to bully my way here. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> Don't say that. Don't say that. Okay. I'm going to end the broadcast. You ladies have a great evening. Love. Don't leave yesterday. I'm going to end the broadcast. Without it. Um, and then um, if you didn't catch it, it'll be up for a couple of days and I'm going to take it down. Then it'll be up on the, YouTube channel. So, and Millie's will be up on the YouTube channel this weekend. I get it. I, my, my week has been crazy. And um, who am I talking to next week? Oh, get on um, Chelsea. Uh, not Chelsea. Chelsea's book, if you haven't read it, because um, I got to get on it. I'm starting it tomorrow myself. And that's who will be here to talk to us next week is Chelsea. Love you guys. Have a good evening. Bye-bye. Thanks for coming up. Thanks for showing up for me. <laughs> <laughs>